The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And good afternoon. And welcome to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. We've got a very special Power Trading Hour coming at you today. We're going to look at stocks that uh, have gone vertical, Mav, that have gone parabolic. And, of course, it doesn't matter what we do here as long as we're here at the appointed anointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have? Well, came out with jobs numbers. Uh, market uh, kind of knows that that means higher interest rates, and we're not going to get lower interest rates in the next meeting. If anything, it's going to be a more aggressive Fed. And we could probably say that uh, with the Fed coming out uh, Wednesday and Thursday and some of its members talking that uh, they wanted to let everybody know that the good news isn't that good because it just means we're going to have to raise interest rates a little higher. Well, we're not off that badly. Um, we had a sharp downturn after the numbers came out, but uh, we've got a lot of people that are still probably a little too heavily short the market and you're going to get some kind of blip and that's probably going to be it uh, we're going to look uh, through a great deal of the stocks that like we said and we'll see how many we can get through in this hour uh, but uh, it, to use an old chestnut there's a lot of them that are fairly long in the tooth if you know that horse trader reference but uh, i do digress and that's why i'll win the award going uh, hands down again this year for digression. Uh, but that's kind of it at the moment. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we want to talk about. Eh, I mean, there was some earnings stuff, but I don't think there was a lot in it. Um, but we'll go through some usual suspects. We'll go through a lot of new suspects. But my list of stocks uh, that are parabolic is uh, greater than it was when we headed down earlier in the year. So we've got a lot of stocks that uh, probably are getting to the point of starting to uh, crack. And probably why we're seeing this resistance here. Um, but... Uh, We'll see how the end of the day comes in. That's probably going to tell us a great deal more uh, on whether or not we can hold the highs or there's anybody that's wanting to go and run the shorts uh, just before the end of the day. 877-927-6648. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, my mixed metaphors. Uh, why do I even have to uh, bring them up? I win that award. I think I'm the only one in the category. So that's kind of it. Let's do a little history and then we'll move on. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. After four failed attempts, American merchant Cyrus Westfield succeeded in completing the first successful transatlantic telegraph cable, utilizing a shallow submarine plateau that ran between Ireland and Newfoundland. Completed approximately two months after construction began, the cable is the only operational, or was just operational, for over a month. However, this uh, cable proved the feasibility of transatlantic communications, and Cirrus Westfield raised new funds to complete the first permanent telegraph line in 1866. And, of course, a great deal of that uh, was delayed by the Civil War. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think the one in 1866 only lasted a month, two or two months, and they had to come back another year later. Uh, they just really didn't understand that you couldn't just pump more and more power through a cable and not have it fail. Uh, there was, uh, you know, what we think of today as uh, the rare earth mineral uh, in those days was a product called uh, gutta percha which is kind of a tarry sap uh, from trees uh, in the South Pacific. And it was used to coat these before the days. It was the, uh, it was the plastics of its time. Uh, 
Uh, but uh, they didn't really have a good idea how to make cables and all the uh, physics behind it. They'd pump more power through the cable, and eventually it would just uh, splay out and uh, blow through uh, the, uh, the the under, underwater cable, underwater marine cables. But, uh, man, that's quite the business. It's still done. And, of course, uh, almost every year we're getting another uh, uh, Trans-Pacific or Trans-Atlantic or Trans-African fiber optic cable to carry more data between everyone. But uh, on this day, we kind of got out of the deal of waiting for ships to actually sail from one uh, country to the next. And mail took two weeks. And you could uh, pay up a little bit, and uh, you could, uh, for a shilling, get a, a message across. 877-927-6648. Okay. Let's get to these charts already on progress over most of TFNN as we get ready here. I'll pull this one up. I've got a lot, so we'll get to them. Um Again, the way I look at it, uh, I know a lot of people um, have used uh, other techniques for figuring out parabolic moves and markets. Uh, but this uh, Joe DiNapoli double repo pattern, which is uh, take three days, put it out three days in the future. And if you can stay above it for 10 to 15 days, start watching out. Uh, the first one on our list here is Agilent Technologies that has been above the 3 by 3 uh, probably, well, since uh, the 19th of uh, July, looks like we're going to be right at closing underneath it. And again, double repo patterns are what I love. Uh, they make my, uh, my P&L every year because they generally work so well. And they also do uh, the worst thing, which is chase you out right before the big uh, turn, either on the bottom or the top, comes in. Uh, anyway, uh, you got a handful of days uh, above. You got one today and not a lot of volume. So what you really need is a couple days below it, a couple days above it, maybe one day, and the next move back down generally goes back to the starting point of where these things are at. And again, you're generally looking for 10 or 15 days in the real go-go uh, phase of the last of the Fed pumps. Uh, it was uh, 20, 25 days, but historically 10, 15 days. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 days out here. So this is the first one underneath it. Uh, Apple, another one up here. And again, it's all about the close uh, on these. So you want to close above it. So on the 5th of uh, July, Apple closed above it for the first time. You had almost a, just a tiny tick under here on the 26th uh, for Apple, and it popped right back into the next day. But uh, you're going pretty good. No real sign out here other than light volume today on it. Uh, I have noticed that there are a lot setting up in the housing industry. We'll get to those uh, and some of those charts as we return. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, dearest partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Turn talking in the den. Why do we need so much fiber optic cable? Satellites work the same. Well, Musk is trying to uh, actually get satellites as fast as fiber optic cable, and he's going to have lasers uh, with the satellites beaming uh, information to each other, and that would actually be faster than fiber optic cable because light. And fiber optic cable only travels at about two-thirds the speed of light. But uh, it's nice to be redundant um, out there. We've got stuff. But uh, at, at this point, fiber optic cable is, uh, is faster than most stuff, but not as good as uh, speed of light. So it depends on what you're really looking for. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot more of that. I know that some of the exchanges uh, in Asia and especially India are just now starting to get past uh, being open four hours a day. So we're probably going to have a lot more uh, interaction going forward. Uh, as we said uh, before, we're going through a lot of these stocks that have done nothing but go straight higher. Atlas Worldwide is one of those, so watch for this one on the pullback. Got to 99. Um, I'm not sure if this one's in a buyout. Kind of looks like it, doesn't it? I haven't gone through these and find out why these are doing it. Uh, we've got a lot of other ones. Uh, ABMD. Uh, is probably going to close below it today. I like a bigger ramp than this, but generally this is also a good sign that we're getting close. Airbnb, of course, uh, had earnings. Um, and you're, eh, you had one day underneath, but really you can look at this move starting on the 18th up here. Uh, starting to peter out on the volume today. ECLS also. Uh, these are some that are probably going to have a pretty good snapback for a day or two. Uh, you're just kind of on the cusp. But again, I, I suspect these are setting up for some fairly decent downside patterns coming next week. But uh, we shall see. 
Okay, I got some emails here, so we're going to go to those. Okay. Come on. Not now. Okay. Uh, question where you would uh, you sell Disney? I'd sell it right now. Um, they've already they they have a movie so bad that they're not going to even bother to release it on on uh, release it at all. They're going to take ninety million dollars and just burn it on uh, Batwoman. They're afraid it's so bad that no one will watch any other uh, DC comic movies if they ever release it. Uh, there's probably more of that where it's came, where it came. A lot of people were trying to impress each other in Hollywood instead of in, impressing Wall Street. And I think the, uh, the pullback is going to be uh, much tougher as the new CEO tries, tries to turn the ship around. But you had a huge loss in Buzz uh, Lightyear. I think this stuff is going to – I think it's back under 100 bucks uh, on earnings. But uh, we shall see. Uh, Roblox uh, are R B. What is that? L X. Take a look at it. Yeah, this looks a little better. I don't know if anything's truly changed in this. I dislike the volume, which has been going down. Really, since the 12th of June, uh, you can kind of just draw a line down here into today. Um, if I, you know, I don't know anything about what they're going to report. I always thought that they were massively overpriced, probably still are. Those games don't make that much money, and it's getting much harder uh, for these companies to make money by uh, getting kids to buy in-app purchases. But, uh, eh, don't know. I'm not a big fan of either one of those right now. I think maybe after Disney reports and throws the baby out with the bathwater for all the horrible stuff that's been going on in there, uh, we've talked about just how bad uh, some of the receptions to its products are. Like I said, Buzz Lightyear probably going to lose $300 million. Um, there's other things going on out there, but, uh, uh, like I said, uh, throwing a hundred million dollar movie, $90 million movie in the ash can and not even going to bother to put it out anywhere else. Um, maybe this earnings cycle gets a low put in, but I think so. Uh, WBD, I thought it was Disney was, yeah, Disney was light year. Uh, Batgirl is WBD. Eh, I'll have to go back and look. Uh, all I'm saying is there's a bunch of crap coming out from these companies, and very little of it is good. Um, you know, there's some good movies coming out from Independence right now, but I don't. Yeah, I'm I'm a seller here for everything. And the reason is for the stocks that we're going through here today. And that is almost all of these, and I mean, I've got probably a thousand of them. Uh, and I've never had a thousand of them all above, you know, 10, 15 days above a three by three. That really means that there's only been one side to the market. And when that's over, generally, you at least have a 50% retracement, if not more. I'm looking at ACT. Looks like this could come back to the low 24s. Uh, it's been rolling since the 25th. Uh, to, to ACWI, not so much in that one. Uh, this one's very interesting to me, analog devices. Uh, I think a lot of people were buying these on the what I think is now a false hope of the CHIP Act. 
that CHIP Act is probably going to get negated by legislation this weekend, which is going to mean that, uh, yeah, they give with one hand, but going to take away with the other. It's incredibly hard to build uh, semiconductors here in the United States because if you have to charge uh, tax on those before they go somewhere else, then someone else is going to build in a jurisdiction where there's no tax, and maybe they have to pay tax here on those chips when they come to the United States. But guess what? They're not going to pay it all the way around the world um, to uh, do it. So I'm actually thinking that uh, the semis ran a lot on the uh, hype of, uh, of uh, the CHIPS Act, and then they're going to find out uh, that they got a pig in a poke. And if you don't know what that means, there was a burlap bag, and uh, people would sell pig piglets in them. And, of course, you couldn't see the piglets, so you didn't know what they were. So a lot of times you got, uh, well, let's say special needs piglets. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, how do you do this? Uh, okay, adjust date and time. Okay, sync now. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Uh, to, to get to the rest of these, as we said, uh, eight, uh, analog devices. I would have liked this to be a little sharper, so I'd probably look somewhere else. Um, maybe, 
AMD looked like it uh, it might be kind of the same thing. I thought maybe the little higher in it just because everybody's shorting the devil out of it. Maybe you get another spike on Monday. Uh, I'm thinking it probably gets to 109 before it finds some kind of high. Uh, to, to, that was for uh, Jeff. Uh, Archer Daniel Midlands Supermarket to the World uh, closed under the nine day yesterday. Uh, and that second day, again, you want another close above it, and then the next move below it, if it's within a few days, is generally where you're going to have a lot of pullback. This one to about 76.50. Uh, ADP, uh, this one's been uh, higher since, what are we going to call that, the 19th? And not, not the pattern I like. I kind of like a nice straighter higher one out here but it's still doing the same thing autodesk uh, very much uh, in the vein and uh, could pull back to the 192s uh, it's been higher since really the 15th of uh, july without a close underneath the three by three and you're just kind of touching it today so you get back below it back above it and man, probably not a huge pullback in the scheme of things, but my guess is that's where we're headed. Uh, Aflac, uh, eh, just a handful kind of skipping up. Uh, ALTR, which is Altar Engineering. Uh, this is kind of what I like. You get the uh, close back below. It kind of meanders around. Maybe it gets back up to 58, and the 3x3 three three is a little bit higher. Then the next close down would probably take you to 54. Uh, we already looked at AMAT, AMKR. Okay. And see, what do we have here? Um, uh, M Core Technologies. Uh, this is one that looks like it's kind of setting up. Uh, I don't like to short stocks below 30 bucks. But really, it's been above uh, back since the 8th of uh, July. ANET, Arista Networks, eh, not as bad as some of the other ones. This is the one that really are, I'm starting to think are setting up for retests of the lows fairly quickly. Uh, AO Smith, which kind of ran off the bottom. Uh, of course, it makes water heaters and other things. Uh, but uh, I'm waiting for the new housing uh, and building to fall off a cliff and get the same uh, information in the jobs report. We're not quite there yet, but my guess is we've got maybe another month or two and we're going to see uh, all the houses built that had uh, financing at lower rates. And then they're just going to shut off the valves. I think everybody's already seeing that coming. See what I did there? A little, little valve insertion and metaphor into A.O. Smith. Anyway, um, you really kind of been above it since uh, the 19th. I uh, closed below it really you know, two days ago. Got a gap down today on light volume. Generally, get one more push, and ideally maybe 61.50 or something, and then that probably would come back down to the 55s. To see what else. I've got so many in this list. ASML, which is another reason I'm thinking that we're probably getting very close for the SMHs to roll over. Uh, this has been above uh, the 3x3 three three since the 13th of July. We're now just getting a kind of a close right at it. We'll see what happens by the end of the day. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's see what and we're getting a little bit of weakness. I would have liked a little bit more today. So maybe we they try to push once again on Monday's open. I thought maybe we'd have a, a low end by now. Uh, anyway, uh, ASML, uh, of course, uh, we've talked about this one. It kind of really pulled back a lot on uh, us, uh, the U.S. at least, putting sanctions uh, on uh, Chinese getting the equipment from ASML. They've had their own problems with production. We've talked about on the show before with uh, Zeiss, the German manufacturer, uh, making incredibly perfect mirrors. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the level of being perfect is almost ridiculous uh, for what these guys do. But uh, the lack of natural gas in 
and Germany has led to these guys not uh, having the equipment to actually deliver. Um, but uh, the Zeiss mirror, um, the if the uh, if a th I think it's like a three foot mirror, and if the in, in, uh, imperfections were blown up to the size of the planet, I think it's like less than one foot. Uh, it would be still be a perfect uh, a perfect sphere at a 25,000 mile diameter with one foot difference at the size of the of the earth so there's some stuff in there that is is needed to be at, literally perfect uh, as perfect as we can make it they're going to have problems i suspect with the natural gas problem in germany going forward and there isn't another place to go get these mirrors um they're not that many companies that specialized making 250 of something that have to be perfect all the time so i'd watch that one very closely you don't have a lot of volume today but again i think we're probably going to get maybe a little pop early on monday and we'll see one of the ones that uh, i've warned about for a while uh that i think has deep accounting problems uh i don't know that they do but just the way that other companies have been acquirers of other technology and eventually you find out it's all a house of cards is kind of the way that Avago has been a big acquirer. Hard to really know what's inside the books. You know that they're either gently roasted or completely burnt. Uh, that's a everybody. But uh, this has been above uh, since the 15th. We haven't had really a, a pullback. You kind of touched it one day on the 26th, but that was it. Uh, again, these are the patterns that I look at for the ver very good setups. Uh, Avnet um, closed below yesterday, a little gap today. Again, may get a couple of days. So I'm going to say that we're probably setting up the patterns for next week, maybe into late next week, where we're going to see a lot of these. The market start may start moving down already, but I think uh, the big pullbacks in these are uh, coming up. Avery Dennison is kind of the same thing. Eh, not a lot of volume in the last couple of days, so it's getting close. Uh, BAM Brookfield uh, Asset Management, which is a REIT um, company. Again, probably very problematic for REITs going forward. Uh, higher interest rates just don't make properties more valuable. They make them less valuable. Uh, and, of course, you really haven't had much in the way of volume up here. But, of course, it hadn't thundered up and with a huge pullback. I'm just showing these as a matter of course. Uh, okay, somebody in the den saying Micron back a little. Yeah. There's a, it hadn't been. Micron has not been acting well. And I suspect that, that uh, it is uh, the, uh, the shadow of China on a lot of these. Uh, We'll be back in a minute. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we return, we're going to go into some more. Have a quick uh, question about Apple. I don't. I think we went through it. I don't think that there's much there. Not a lot of volume. Uh, again, these patterns are going to take probably another week to set up on a lot of these. Uh, but the first thing is going to, going to bust through these levels, get everybody bearish. Going to try to push it back up higher one more time. Uh, the shorts are going to have given up. This is the pattern now, not the reality. Uh, or at least the way I'm putting the story together for what this pattern is. Anyway, you get below it, get a handful of people short, it goes back up, and you know, they cover real quick, but it never gets back up there. They quit shorting, you really don't have any more grist for the mill, and then it comes back down but these patterns come so many times and uh, I think uh, somebody in the den that's been around for a while will know when I'm starting to push uh, uh, stock after stock that has been in this pattern generally we get a fairly decent pullback in the market and it's very quick and sharp uh, but timing is all about it NASDAQ same kind of thing uh, really haven't touched uh, three by three displaced moving average. If you're uh, new to the show, I love uh, the three by three. It's short, it's sweet. I knew it when it was in a younger man's clothes. Anyway, the uh, NASDAQ uh, above it, it's a great barometer just to see which side is everything on. And if there is no price discovery to the low side after a number of days, generally what you get is euphoria. Uh, on this one, maybe you could get 13,500 on the NASDAQ uh, in a bounce, but you're kind of already down on lighter volume today, I suspect. So anyway, we'll look at that. But we're probably, these patterns are probably mean down a little bit, another uh, opportunity, another try to push higher. And when that one fails, that's the one where you get three, four, five percent moves in two days and 10 percent moves in a week uh, to the downside when these things have given up uh, the uh, euphoria off the lows. Uh, <laughs> uh, it takes a few days, though. A lot of people, you know, just don't think it's happening in the next five minutes. Uh, let's see what else we have out here. Um, yeah. Uh, BP, uh, you're kind of just touching it today, but not enough of a vertical move. Generally, it's like these. Broad Ridge, uh, Broad Ridge Financial Solutions. I look at this one. This one looks like it could be setting up for a pullback to 147. 
I don't know if these guys have options or not. I'll have to look at it. Uh, but again, probably setting up for some kind of move into late summer uh, where we give this all back again. We didn't have the volume. Uh, you could make a ski slope out of the volume on most of these stocks over the last week, 10 days. Uh, oh, everybody wants to play the negative waves. Well, maybe we'll play it before the end of the show. Okay, and what else out there? Uh, BWA, Borg Warner. This one's already done it. That's what I was going to say. We're already starting to see some of these start to crack. Uh, Borg Warner's been above since the 18th of uh, July. So you had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So yesterday was the first one underneath it. You get the second one. Now what you want is probably a rally into 39, and then that sets up a pullback probably to the 3350 area where it kind of starts off. The one thing about this pattern when it does work is that's exactly what happens. You get these big moves, you get a kind of a, a, head, a second head fake. Now sometimes they just pull back to 50% and then they start off and that's the ABC version of this, but you still have to pull back. But what you want to watch for is that kind of push one more time to the highs. You don't get anybody really coming in. The shorts have kind of given up. And then when you come back down, of course, with no shorts, there aren't any natural buyers. And you get those very sharp, very fast moves. Okay. What else do we have? Camp. What is this one? Eh, eh, $5 stock. Take a look at cars. Um, yeah, it's hard for me to think that these car companies are going to do very well with higher interest rates over the next year. But, you know, we've I think we're still getting at the very tail end of those folks that ordered cars and couldn't get them for supply chain reasons. But uh, you're up today on very light volume on this one. I'm not going to short a $12.50 stock, but... Uh, we'll go through the rest of them. Like I said, I got probably a thousand that we can go through. Uh, Commerce Bank shares. Uh, this uh, has been above since about sixty-six bucks. It's up to seventy-one thirty-nine today. Again, no real uh, sign of strength on the way up, which is always something to concern yourself. Uh, Cabot. All I can think of is there's a movie called, or uh, there was a series called Mystery Science Theater 3000. And apparently, you know, they find the worst movies in the world to riff on. But uh, there was one movie about uh, somebody named Cabot. And every other word out of uh, somebody's in this bad movie's name was Cabot. Cabot, Cabot. I've got to find that movie. Anyway, Cabot, CBT. Uh, has closed under, did gap down today. So you're looking for one more attempt back up. Uh, and on this one, uh, it would bring back, uh, bring you back to about 65 bucks on that. Uh, not much in that one. Let's see what we have here. Uh, yeah, well, someone brought up Tesla. I haven't looked at them today. So let's take a look at them. Yeah, you closed underneath today. So, again, what you want now, this would be tail of two cities. One, a 50% pullback, and then maybe an ABC higher if you're bullish. Uh, if you're bearish, what you want this thing to do is to pop back above with no volume or very light volume uh, above that 3x3 three three over the next couple of days, and then the next move below. My belief is that it'll be a giant surprise on Tesla uh, and be very tough, and there'll be few people short the thing when it decides to turn. Uh, CERN, uh, that's something else out here. Uh, CF Industries, yeah, that's had a nice move from the, about 83 up to 102. So it's that. Uh, <laughs> uh, when can we say swing away? I, uh, I'm going to say probably next week. Uh, but we'll see. I could be wrong, but generally this pattern does, I'm going to say three-fourths of the time, isn't a 50% pullback and an ABC up. It tends to be a, uh, a let's fool around at the highs and give it all up. Um, 
Carlisle Group. Question about GDX real quick, or GD, yeah, GDX. Uh, eh, not much going on there. GLD. Now, you're above it. I wanted to pull back. I think you're getting close to it. Um, maybe 164.50 on Monday. Be nice. We'll be back in a minute. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we return, we've got Jeff in Philly. Give me a full report, Jeff. We only have two minutes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do have a lot to say, so I'm calling late. I'll try to make this fast. Uh, the question is, would you advise against shorting iron condors going into a earnings report that coincides with a large uh, economic report like non-farm payroll? Everybody has their own uh, way of trading, and... Uh, there's a line in uh, in Jesse Livermore's book that always comes back to me, and it, it not that it's wrong. It's just that I don't do it. Uh, I don't get into complex uh, 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 options positions. Uh, I tend to look for hugely asymmetrical returns, 
uh, and they've done me well. So um, it's just not something I do. Uh, let me. Uh, okay, uh, I, I understand. Let me find this. Uh, you know, I can just say real quick. Um, I've been selling iron condors. I had called in like a couple weeks ago or so and asked how often they, um, how often stocks move within the market movers prediction. And you said about 80%, which really lit my eyes up. Anyway, I've been selling iron condors since then with great success. In fact, I haven't had one that uh, moved greater than the anticipated move. Until today, I had two. <laughs> and I was thinking, uh-oh, you know what? That was stupid. I shouldn't do it into a big economic report that could exaggerate the move. It's not only the earnings report. It's also, you know, the uh, economic report. Yeah, um, I can't find it right here. We're going to the break uh, but, uh, and the end of the show. But uh, Jesse Livermore had something that it was impro- uh, something like it's a, it was hu- a huge change in his operation where he quit uh, playing uh, and gambling and went to uh, trading stocks just on inevitable advances or declines. I'll talk about it on Monday. Thanks for the call. Okay. So when you can, Thanks. not when you have to. And we'll see you Monday. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to